okay? I'm going to encourage everybody to 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 get out and vote, no matter what your um you know belief system is, what whoever you believe, you know, whatever politician or political party that you're associating yourself with, I'm going to still encouraging you to vote. Um, me personally, it's a, it's a personal thing as far as voting is concerned, and I'm going to deal with this whole thing of Christianity and 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 uh, and politics in just a little bit. But let me just give you a backdrop on why I believe it's um, me personally, um, you know, as far as my civic duty to get out here because there's a lot of people that's going on before me that uh, paid a heavy price, you know, to vote. And I'm, I, I'll give you an example. My, my grandfather, the late Reverend Dr. Ursel F. Webb, um, he's actually originally from North Carolina, and um, by and by, you know, he ended up in New Jersey where I grew up at, and the story goes, my great-grandfather was a, a, what they called a circuit preacher down here in North Carolina many, many years ago, and um, one Sunday, where, as the story goes, um, as my granddad told the story from, you know, a child's perspective, that uh, the ghosts showed up at the house after the service. And the ghost came and took my, my great-grandfather out of the house mm -hmm. and shot him and uh, said that he had to get um, himself and his family out of North Carolina before the whole family, you know, caught one. Okay, um, so the ghosts ran my uh, family out of North Carolina. The, the website of the family out of North Carolina and with my grandfather witnessing his father um, being tormented by the ghost um, he still uh, grew up and he still you know became a very successful man he passed at a Baptist church up in Jersey City New Jersey for 42 years um, he led civil rights marches you know, um, he once he got up there and was leading civil rights marches, he himself, his life was actually threatened by the ghosts. Um, you know, but yet and still, the experiences that he had, he never once spoke out of hate towards anybody. Okay. He never once spoke about uh, animosity towards anybody. When he walked through the streets of Jersey City, what no matter what your background was, you was always his friend. You see, um, but I stand on his shoulders and he fought and he sacrificed more than what I ever did and what, more than what my grandfather, my great grandfather ever did for the, for the, um, for me to have the opportunity to vote. Right. So if I didn't get out and vote, okay, it'd be, uh, uh, uh the legacy of my, my grandfather and great grandfather would be for notch. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so that's my spin on the whole voting thing I, as an obligation to my family right. because there's folks that literally went on behind before me and paid a, a high price for that. Now, now I'm going to deal in this and I'm going to deal with it um, from a different angle than what a lot of folks deal with it because a lot of folks deal with it from the worldly viewpoint, um, from, from the viewpoint of, of, of their culture, you know, uh, the viewpoint of, you know, their politics and everything. I'm going to attempt to deal with this topic from, from the kingdom standpoint. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to attempt to do it that way because if we, I believe, you know, that if I say I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian before I'm anything. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, so I'm going to be walking down that road that way. Now, I, in my walk, I've heard a lot of uh, uh, Christian leaders, they, uh, they, they, they like to say that Jesus was a politician. You know, I don't know if you've heard that, Brother Darius, but I've heard it, that Jesus was a politician. Um, now, now I'm not going to say that I totally agree with that. Right. Okay. Uh, I would say, yes, he dealt with politicians. You know, he dealt in a political arena. Right. And if you go throughout the Bible, all, you know, all the men of God had the prophets. They had to deal with the kings and all, but that did not make them a politician. Right. You see, Jesus, you know, he dealt with sinners, but that didn't make him a sinner. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, okay, a politician is a elected and appointed by people to do the will of people. Right. Okay, Jesus, he was not elected or appointed by no person. Right. You understand? He was sent by God, right. the Father. 
okay? Um, a, a politician um, is known to negotiate and compromise and even sell out their agenda, okay? Uh, Jesus never compromised, never negotiated, and never sold out the agenda. Right. And his agenda was to reconcile and still is um, to reconcile all men and women back to the Father. That's right. Okay, that thing is not negotiable. So for a man to say that Jesus was a politician, no, that's minimalizing, that's marginalizing our Savior. Okay, that's that's bringing them, and that's that's the issue. We're bringing Jesus Christ down to fit our agenda instead of us fitting in Jesus Christ's agenda. Right. You see, so that's kind of uh, where I'm go I'm going with this now. Now, now, brother, Des, I'm gonna share this with you, like I said, a little bit before we got on, um, got on air, and 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 it, and it struck me. Well, uh, before we back up, going back to Jesus, okay, you know, when we come to Jesus and and we say we accept Him, we know He's supposed to be our Lord and Savior. That's correct, right? Okay, but watch this, um, folks, um, will accept Him as Savior because they don't want to go to hell; mm -hmm. they want their sins to be buried. Okay, but they leave out the Lord part. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, I accept you as Savior, but because if I accept you as Lord, that means I'm going to have to do what you say. Right. And you know, because what he says, so why for you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say. Right. You see what I'm saying? So now, if Jesus was truly Lord over our lives, a lot of the issues that we're having, we would not be having. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, which, which leads me into this next thing. Okay. Because here's the thing, we're, we, we have a, a, a country divided, a community divided, a people divided, and now actually we have a church divided, and I'll get into that a little mm -hmm. bit later, okay? But I, last night I was looking over um, an article from Gallup News, and it was and it gave um, how many, what percentage of the American population um, identifies as Christian, and, and it kind of it threw me off. I was like, these numbers can't be correct. It can, it can't, it cannot possibly correct. Mm -hmm. You know, it says that basically. Um, I got a whole breakdown, but I'm just going to do you know the big number. The, right at seventy one percent of Americans identify as Christian. Right. <laughs> now, come on now. That's that's big. That's big. That's a huge number. So how is it we divide it? You understand what I'm saying? 71% of the American population identify as Christian. Okay, so if that's the case, that's a political force in of itself. Right. You, you understand what I'm and, saying? Go and, ahead. And, and the foundations of America was built up on Christianity. Right, right. Because even in our money, what did our money say? And, and God we trust. So somewhere along the line, we forgot something. So, there you go, brother. Somewhere along the line, something got messed up. Like I said, here's the thing. If you got 70%, okay, supposedly, you know, believe in the Bible. Right. 70% of Americans say they follow Christ. Right. But yet we have so much turmoil. Somebody's lying in the church. Yeah, you just, that, that's all. You know what I mean? I'm just, you know, real life church. I'm just keeping this real. As, if, if those numbers are real, why is there so much issues? Right. 70 percent you understand so here's the thing and when i look at it is it's you have the democratic party and there's a lot there's a whole bunch of political parties right. but we, they but they say we have two major parties mm -hmm. the democrat party and the republican party neither one of them have 70 percent control over nothing right you understand what I'm saying? So you have some of that 70% over in the RNC, some of that 70% is over in the DNC. Now, so we should be able to, right there, we should start seeing a little issue. Right. The church is split. It really is. The church is split between, between these parties. Now, we look at these politicians. Um, we vote for them because we're looking for them to fulfill some of our needs. Right. 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 That's why we, 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 we pander to this party over here because they're going to do this for us. This for at least that's what they say. Right. We're going to, if you vote for me, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. If you vote for me, I'm going to do this for you for that for you. But what, 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 what how about this? What if the seven, what if the 70% truly did what the 70% supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And what is it? Matthew six and 33 says, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so if the 70% truly was following Christ, wouldn't we be seeking Christ first for our needs? Right. 
and I, I tell you this too, uh, when you was talking about how God, Jesus Christ wasn't a politician, mm -hmm. he dealt with a lot of politicians right. stuff. Right. Uh, a couple of things that came to my spirit about it was, remember when he said the poor, you always have them. That's right. Them. That's right. Right. That's right. And in today's society, the poor is labeled as what Democrats, mm -hmm. those that don't have right, right, right. Mm -hmm. poverty. Mm -hmm. And then you have your Republicans, mm -hmm. which are your your rich, the ones that got the money, the ones that that's kind of making they, uh making the, the laws and stuff like that, mm -hmm. trying to protect their assets. Right, right. And you have these two going against each other, trying to see, all right, uh, and then you come in with the body of Christ. You have those that have and have not. And you have those that have not. Mm -hmm. All believing in one God, mm -hmm. but we're still divided because we still depend. Which one are we depending on more? There we go. You have the poor that demands that that, de that depends more on Christ mm -hmm. because they do not have. Mm -hmm. And you have those that have don't really depend on God as much because they don't lack anything. Mm -hmm. There's no really no need. Right, right. So you always have these two bouncing backs and forth. Now I'm I'm glad you because see that we got a little bit ahead of ourselves with that, but I'm glad we on that. that that's good. I'm glad we on that because watch this. <laughs> because since we talk about Democrat and Republican, and we're talking, let's let's talk about history. Right. Uh, once upon a time, uh, uh, Democrats was Republicans, and Republicans was Democrats. That's right. uh -huh. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. Um, the Jim Crow um, laws historically was Democrat. The Party of the South was Democrat. The Party of the Slave Masters was Democrat. This is fact. Right. Okay. And then somewhere along the line, it changed. So, but, so my question, because I was thinking about that on the way, and so I thank God that you brought that up, is when did it change and who decided to change it? You know what's so, what's so ironic is because uh, what I'm trying to do is take what you take in history mm -hmm. and compare it to how it was in the Bible days right. and compare it to now how it is now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, you also remember where God said that the first shall be last. Shall be last. And the last shall be. So you ask when, when did this occurred mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was born to occur because there was going to be on, a brother. point of time mm -hmm. where it was going to be reversed come on now. Hear me. now come on you better stop now <laughs> now it, 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 go ahead it, it was bound to happen because god already knew what was going to happen anyway mm -hmm. we look at history look at back back in time how everything we have now we had to fight for it mm -hmm. there i pointed out to my to my parents that there was always a time where blacks fear whites mm -hmm. they was afraid of whites mm -hmm. they was afraid of what they could do to them right they were intimidated by it. and then you look at it now it's it's opposite opposite, opposite. now whites is more inferior to the blacks right well, well let's 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 look at this let's um i don't know if inferior is the right word we want to use well well not necessarily inferior, but it's more uh intimidation yeah intimidated intimidated you know uh and and, it's, and, it, and it shouldn't be that way. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't because going back, let's bring it all full circle. Because again, it's one body. It's one body. It, it, it should. And, and, and what kills me with the white and black situation is we, the white race and the black race, and and and, and I could care less. That, you know, I'm not really here for fans or nothing. Right. You know, it's arrogant. Right. It's an arrogant conversation mm -hmm. because we, as black and white, we speak as if we're the only races on the planet. That's right. What about all the other races? Right. As if God didn't create everybody else. Right. So, so whenever a black person talks about black this, black this, and against white, white, and a white person comes the other way, well, what about everybody else? Because right. John three sixteen said he created, you know, he loved right. everybody. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that in of itself, and that still brings us back to the split. The split. And and. And it's so it's so amazing because you now the Bible said there's nothing new up under the sun. Right, there's nothing, nothing new. that has happened mm -hmm. already. Remember the the woman at the at the wheel. Mm -hmm. Though that woman, you were not you wasn't supposed to interact with those right. type of people. Exactly. Because when when Jesus Christ's disciples came, they was looking at Jesus like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? Right. We don't associate ourselves with these type of people. Right. And that's how it is with Democrats and Republicans. We don't really we don't really want that. Or even with our races, we we don't. We don't want to affiliate in that way right to come to a mutual agreement right to come to an understanding to come to all right there's that we can we there's a way that we can do this without violence or with, there's a way we can do this where everybody have a fair share mm -hmm. but it's, it's not like that no and so so going back to my thing is okay if that's the case um i i have a problem with that right 
you know, I'm, I haven't figured everything out. I'm not perfect. I don't walk on water, nothing like that. But as 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 a Christian, I'm more part of that, I'm part of seven. I believe in my heart of hearts that that Jesus died for me. I'm a true follower of Him. And and how is it possible that people can say that they're a follower of Christ but allow for this division? Mm -hmm. Okay, because watch this. Here's the thing. Uh, 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 I'm going to skip forward a little bit. Romans 13 and 1. No, I'm going to come back because there's a, there's a thing about 1 Corinthians 12, 25, and 26. Okay, let's talk about schisms. Mm -hmm. That there should be no schism, no division right. in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Right. And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all members should rejoice. Right. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you know, there shouldn't be this. Okay, and you see, I'm going to tell you here's the thing, and then I'm building a foundation for another series, another broadcast, because I believe mm -hmm. this is all by design. Oh, absolutely. You see what I'm saying? The, the enemy, and when I say the enemy, and just because I'm black, I'm not saying the enemy is white. Right. Let's clear that up. Right. I'm speaking, again, I'm speaking from a kingdom perspective. Right. When I say the enemy, I'm talking about the devil. Right. Let's be real about right. this. The devil been about his business of dividing since the garden of Eden. That's right. Period. That's right. You see what I'm saying? So the, so the enemy, the devil, has been playing this long game forever. That's right. And we just arrived on the scene and we, you know, we look at our brothers who well, have a different skin color and, 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 and we think this is something new. Right. Like you said, it's nothing new under the sun. Right. We, we think slaves just happened in, in North America. On, and the slaves been around, you go back all through the Bible, right. it's been there. Right. Oppression has been there. Right. So this stuff, they talk, when we start talking about, oh, the system of, 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 of oppression that's inherited in America, it's always, it's always been there. It has nothing to do with the United States. It's always been there. It's always been there. So, so what I'm getting at is people of God, wake up. Mm -hmm. It's not, okay, and I, I could care less who's in the White House because guess what? I'm like Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been times when I've had a lot, and there's times sometimes when I ain't had nothing. Right. There's sometimes when I was a fool, and there's sometimes that I was hungry. But all situations there, and I've learned to be content. It had nothing to do who was, who was in the White House. Mm -hmm. This is stuff that's going to happen, right. period. And, you know, so, so regardless of that, if I really believe that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, what the heck a political party got to do with any of that? Right. And, and I'm so glad you went back to it started in the garden. Right. Everything started, started in the garden. garden. Now, what happens is in the garden, there was peace. Mm -hmm. There was no division. Right. There was no oppression. Right. There was nothing. Right. Everything was fair mm -hmm. and good. Right. What happened was the devourer slipped in. Come on now. Come on. We're going somewhere. Listen now. I'm listening. Go ahead. The devourer slipped in mm -hmm. and he told a half truth. There you go. So we finding out what's going on is this been is there is a half truth but it's still considered a lie. That's right. So they believed a lie. Mm -hmm. So now we look in politics, the come devourer on, has on. slipped into the body of Christ. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Come, on. Yeah, come on now. Now the devourer has slipped into the body of Christ, mm -hmm. which have two different opinions. Right. You don't hear me. I'm hearing you. Come on, the, bro. The woman had another. She had when when the when the devourer slipped in, when the devil slipped in, and she started listening to what he was saying. Mm -hmm. She believed him, mm -hmm. but Adam already knew what God had said. That's right. There was already two mm -hmm. opposites there. He believed he rather chose the woman mm -hmm. rather what God had already said in the beginning. Right. You yeah, man, come on, see, 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 uh, uh, see, see. That's where I'm getting. Uh, man, time done went by, but we want to deal with no because we're going somewhere it's with this. Good. This it's is good. good because watch this. You know, and I could care less about a person's um, political affiliation. Right. I could care less. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I see it for what it is. That's right. I see it. You know, both sides lie. Mm -hmm. Neither side have the monopoly on the kingdom. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It is good on, on both sides. It's bad on both sides. And it's everything in between. You see, but the, so, but the th the issue I have is when when the so called body of Christ sells their soul to a political party, mm -hmm. and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. And we believe in the half truths. Right. We believe in the half lies. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? You you got people dying chasing the half truth. That's right. And they've been doing this since the garden. That's 
Since the garden. Since, since the garden. And, 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 and we so blind. We got so much scales over our eyes. We see it as a Republican thing or a Democrat thing. Right. We see it as a black thing or a white thing. No, this is a heaven and hell thing. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why they had they, they separated church from state. Come on now. You don't hear me. No, no, now watch this. But see, see, but it's impossible. Watch this. It's impossible. No, you can put it in legislation. You can make it a law. But it's impossible to separate it. Because the seventy percent is Christian, mm -hmm. and, and 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 we're supposed to be going out and vote. You can't change how. Right. You can't. Okay. You can't change my core belief. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So this goes back to what I'm saying. If I'm standing on the word of God, right. not a half truth. Right. If I'm standing on the word of God, mm -hmm. when I go to vote, that should be my primary thing. That what I'm thinking, mm -hmm. not what this politician said. What this? Because we've seen it time and time right. again that they lie. Right. They say one thing and then they get in office or something else. Right. And, 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 and if we can't talk, watch this. And this is this is as real as today's law. Mm -hmm. Okay, I grew up in Jersey City, New Jersey. Right. Been Democratic control forever. But still got jacked up sit um um uh, uh jacked up schools, mm -hmm. crime rate ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Right. The black community is still jacked up, but been Democrat as, as right. somebody's lying to somebody and somebody's buying the lie. You see what I'm saying? Right. But along the line again, like I said, it's all switched and flip flopped and all and, and all of that. And I believe too when they when they did that uh, church separated from the state, that's what that's what really messed things up because they said we can leave church at church. Mm -hmm. This ain't gonna have nothing to do with church. Right. God ain't gonna have nothing to do with right. Right. This. Right. But is the, but here's the thing. Like I said, if the church, mm -hmm. the whole church, will stop feeding into the lies. Stop mm -hmm. feeding into the deception, the division. What a powerful force it would be. Mm -hmm. Because actually, because again, if the church stand on the word of God, right. there would not be no social injustice. Right. It would, would not be no economic disparities. Right. It wouldn't be no education disparities. All that's if the church did what God told the church to do. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? That you know, I don't know, maybe I'm oversimplifying that, okay. but that's the way I see it. You know, okay, so here's the thing. Church is divided. Mark 3, 24, 25 says this. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Mm -hmm. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot be stand. Mm -hmm. So if the church, because I've been in church services where the person of God stood up in the pulpit and said, if you don't vote for this person, something's wrong with you. No, it is. Yes. Been in the church service. So now, if I don't believe in your political standpoints, now you don't alienated me from that body. And, and the, but the problem with that is that, that's not an isolated thing. Mm -hmm. That's going on throughout the country. Mm -hmm. that, right. the, that the church leaders are standing up and picking sides. And it's causing the church, the body, to pick a side. Mm -hmm. And the only side that the church should be on is that of Jesus Christ. That's right. And there's good news to this, Pastor. Mm -hmm. If I'm quoting this right. Go ahead. It says that that the government sits on the shoulders. Come on now. Of who? In fact, I got that written down here. <laughs> watch this. That, 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 that the, the government sits on the mm -hmm. shoulders of Christ. Here it is. Watch this. Here we go. Um, Romans 13 and 1. There you go. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, meaning the, the governing authorities. Mm -hmm. For there is no power, no authority, mm -hmm. but God. Right. The powers, meaning authorities, that be or ordained by God. They wouldn't be there except for him. Right. So no matter what happens, who's ever in office, they would not be there mm -hmm. if God didn't want that person there. You might personally dislike them, but uh, now, 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 now this goes back to it. I said to uh, Pastor Matthews before, yeah, we believe in the Bible until it cuts against our politics. Mm -hmm. We believe in the Bible until it cuts against our culture. Mm -hmm. But right here it said that man sitting in that White House was ordained to be there, whether you like it or not. You said it earlier that it was already said. It, it was already Destined. It was destined to be. And, and I believe when the Bible said that, that the government sits on God, Jesus Christ's shoulders, mm -hmm. it's because all this is orchestrating it's orchestrated. what's going to come. Watch this. I'm going. You can. <laughs> Ooh, you better stop playing. Watch this. Here's the thing. Daniel 2 and 21. And he changes the times and the seasons. Mm -hmm. He removes kings. Come on, come on now. And he sets kings up. He gave wisdom unto the wise and, and knowledge to them that are uh, no understanding. But well, watch this. Okay, here's the thing. What he's doing, what the, the game plan is this, is to divide the people of God, right. which is anti-Christ. Right. 
See, it's a bitch. She said everybody they in the politics. They talk about oh, go to the go to the uh, booths and, and because this is the most important thing. See, but they it just hit the scratches. They don't realize how how, how important right. it is. What 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 what. what time of day we're in right now how deep we're in right now right. you know matthew 24 mm -hmm. talks about um um uh, uh the end times and, mm -hmm. and if you go you know wars and rumors of war sickness and disease and, and if you go down that checklist every piece of that has already happened right. prophecy is fulfilling itself okay now watch this watch this but then it goes to matthew 24 14 and he says okay guess what uh, uh when and he, he tells about you know so no man knows the hour time but guess what he gives a good clue of when um when our time is he says guess what when this gospel is preached to all nations, and nations in that thing, it means people. Mm -hmm. When this gospel has been preached to all people, then the end shall come. In other words, when the church does what God told the church to do, he's shifting on his throne, and he's going to bring an end to this time. You know, and, and, and the point right here, if you remember with King David and King Saul, mm -hmm. the people elected Saul. Come on. The people put Saul mm -hmm. in, in office. Right. That was not God's doing to put Saul in there. Mm -hmm. Now, when Saul messed up, God dethroned Saul. Right. And put David in. Mm -hmm. Even though David was messed up, he had some ways. Right. You have messed up politicians. You still have messed up ways. But somehow God seen himself in David. See? Now, great. You know you're right. And he, great, said, great. he seen himself in David. Mm -hmm. David did not make all did not always make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. But he still had godly decisions. Right. You don't hear me. Come on, come now, on. God had put David in charge because David was the man for the job. Mm -hmm. yeah, see, see, see. Well, what what is, we're getting at is God. God is sovereign over. God will put who He wants well, in charge. There you go. Come on now. That, that, that that is, He'll that do it. He'll do it. Now, now this going because um, see, we're winding down. Let me give you this last thing because because now this is building into where I'm going in my next things because people don't see what's happening. That's right. Okay, watch this. I'm going to give you a t piece of it because God has shown me these things. This country's being ripped apart. The people of God being ripped apart. There's a reason why uh, uh, God sent the letters to John and Revelation to the mm -hmm. churches the church. to warn the churches to get the churches, you know, act together. Right. Get your act together because right. I'm coming soon. Right. Okay. First John four and three says, and every spirit that confesseth not Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Okay, what are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is this: this division amongst us. The devil plotted and planted this a long time ago. He divide, he 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 plotted and planted the division a long time ago. And this is the spirit of the antichrist operating in us. You, you understand? It's like you said, it doesn't. He done wed, wedged his way into the people. Got the wheat and the terrorists growing together. But sooner or later, guess what? You know he's going to send back the, 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 the angels to do the separating. You see what I'm come, come on now. Okay, so now my question to this to the church, my question to the people of God, the, the men and women of God, the leaders of God, okay, in this political season with all the, 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 the back and forth rhetoric right. and us buying into it, the people of God is buying into the rhetoric right. and even buying into the into the violence. Okay, now if God were to come back right now, would you be ready? That's good. You understand what I'm saying? That's good. It, 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 because we buy, we 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 separate in the people. And the Bible says, woe to those who lead my people astray. Mm. We're separating. That's right. Okay, so if God were to come back right now and we in the midst of this, this divisive rhetoric, the separation, and he said there should be no schisms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> come on now. I got to go, y'all. God bless y'all. Uh, God's born for God's people. She may break a promise to exert maximum pressure on Iran. UNC President Margaret Spellings is planning to leave her job in the university system. 